Hey, it's Mike, and this time we're going to talk about fragment caching and memcached, which um, people, you may have heard about memcached. Uh, it's kind of in use in a lot of high-profile websites, um, but exactly what it does and how people use it has kind of been a mystery to people when I talk to them, so I thought I'd give a quick explanation as to, you know, how that works. Now, last screencast we said that um, varnish was a great way to kind of put a, a an expiry on a piece of content and just to serve it out of memory so you don't have to serve it back again or regenerate it um, from your application. Now one of the reasons that I wrote an image board was that the current sort of uh, generation of these things isn't very interactive. Um, there's a lot of uh, sort of things that people have become accustomed to on websites like things popping up automatically and when contents updated that doesn't happen in those so that's not something that can be put into varnish because well it's live so how do we handle that well first off let me show you what i mean when i say that i want things to be a little more interactive i had more of the concept of a sort of an im client than a uh, a web page when I was thinking about this, so let's see how that works. Put it there, and it appears on the one web browser. And just a couple seconds later, you'll see that you know it pops up over here as well. So we can't put that into Varnish, like we've already explained. So what? How do we do this? How do we? But how do we make it fast? It may not look like a lot here, but the average comment has a lot going on. Um, in the case of this one up here, there's a trip code, there's a link to an email, and you know we pull the, the image sizes and all this other stuff out of the database. So let's see what goes into the average comment or post and how that gets generated back into something that you can view. First off, let's take a look at a comment. It has an ID, which is the little number that you see up here that I, I put in the app. Uh, you've, your name goes in it, your email address if you want, a subject if you want, um, a message. Uh, this is we keep to know if there is a trip code. Uh, you don't really need to know about it if you don't know what it is. The IP address of the person that posted it, what post that comment belongs to, and a whole bunch of other data, like uh, the picture, and um, if it's a reply to somebody else, who it's a reply to, and whether the uh, picture is done being thumbnailed. So that's quite a bit. And it may not look like a lot, but to take that and to turn it into this, the application for each one of these will pull the comment out of the database and fill in this form that's a template for a comment so you can see that all this HTML gets generated from stuff from the database. Now if you were to do that every time that someone tries to pull a comment, say if you have 100 comments here and it takes 20 to 70 milliseconds to assemble the trip code and put the date on it and all that stuff, you're looking at quite a long time to have your stuff generated and the page would be pretty sluggish. So what we do is what's called fragment caching. I'll move this off screen so we can show you here. Here's an example of what happens in the server if you're not doing this fragment caching. Is that every time someone goes to the page, this whole thing, each one of these has to be generated. And you see exactly that. that, that um, Okay, it's got to do this, it's got to pull up the database query, it's got to assemble this stuff. It takes 121 milliseconds to assemble that one fragment, that one comment. Um, and then another 800 milliseconds to render it into the final page. So you're talking about a second 
That's even before it gets delivered to the person that's viewing it. So how do we fix that? We do what's called fragment caching. The first time that a comic gets rendered, it gets stuck in this cache. And you can see that we have a fragment that's associated with that comment. And the fragment just means that this it knows that this is not going to change. And if it does, to update it, but this is not going to change. So let's just store that little piece of data somewhere, and then we can reassemble it in any way we want later. And in some cases, we don't want to reassemble it at all. We just want the fragment, because when you saw this update here, it just it didn't bother rendering the rest of the page. It just wanted the fragment just to insert it here via JavaScript. So, OK, we've decided that we're going to take all these little pieces, these little fragments, like say a comment is a fragment, or a post, or this little box here is a fragment that we cache. How do we make that fast so we can grab it later? Because if we're reading and writing to disk every time, that can be sort of resource intensive as well. So what we do is we have memcached D take care of this stuff for us. So what is memcached D? Let's go to the web page and take a look. It's a free and open source, high performance, distributed memory object caching system, generic in nature, but intended for use in speeding up dynamic web applications by alleviating database load. Okay, for humans, that means that we can put data into it and get data out of it, and it just keeps it in memory the entire time, making it a lot quicker than saying, having some heads spin around on a disk to find what we're looking for and getting it from there. It's instant. And you can see that if we look at here. It's not exactly instant here because we're doing some other things with these fragments, but rather than a 70 millisecond um, render, if we have the fragment, it's seven milliseconds. And then it's reading it from disk is zero because we're doing it from memcache. You could expect that to be a little bit higher if you were if you were fragment caching to disk. So let's take a look at what happens when this stuff gets assembled. Let's take a look at memcache instead. And we'll choose something small here. You can see the application sets the fragment to be put into memcache, and then it gets pulled back later. As far as our application is concerned, it knew where it it knew where to find the fragments. It read them, zero milliseconds, and then it brought it back into the page. And the whole round trip took 58 milliseconds, rather than the second or more to generate this from scratch. So. How does this work? How do we how do we decide what goes into memcache and what is sort of static? Well, it's pretty pretty simple. The software framework that that the image board is written in called is, is written in language called Ruby and it's a framework called Rails that's meant for writing web apps. And it is a single configuration line to say Okay, configure a cache store, and this is uh, another component called Dolly that talks to memcache for the application. And then we'll go into the post controller here. And you notice there's nothing in here that specifies that we use memcache for the controller. It's actually in the view in the little HTML you can see we said cache the comment and then cache everything within 
where I say start the cache and end the cache. And then the application framework is smart enough to say, oh, I need to, I need to throw that into memcache. That's it. Memcache is extremely simple and saves us a lot of time. And if you have any other questions about sort of memcache or uh, other uses of memcache, let me know and maybe I'll explain that too.